And we're happy to see him again and have him back at the Met. Welcome back, Massimo. Thank you very much. Before we turned on the mic, I said, don't I remember that your hair was longer when yeah, you were here? Right. And that you were a bigger guy, yeah, too. And you to said see. you lost 15, lost 15 kilos. 15 kilos, which right. is about 35 pounds. Yeah, I think so. To get healthier? Well, or what? I think it's better for health. It's better also for stage. And it's better for, for everything, you know? You, you feel know? better? Yeah, right. You feel better with Definitely. that? Definitely. Definitely. Good Definitely. for you. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. So how's winter in New York? Are you enjoying it? Well, it's not so winter, actually. <laughs> no? It's, uh, it's warmer than, than usual. When I was here la last year, no, in 2014, mm -hmm. in January, February, was was definitely cold. Oh, that's true. That was a hard winter. Yeah, it was an hard winter and very snowy. Even the first time in 2010 was uh, was snowing all the time. Uh -huh. And now it was a uh, storm one week ago. That's true. Two days. Right. It was right. very nice. The day after in Central Park was around making photos. Oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, fun. Well, we have more snow coming later this week, they tell really? us. So, yeah, just wait well, for it. You know, Friday, Saturday, okay. we might have some. For yeah. some Valentine's Day will be nice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, tomorrow morning, right. dress rehearsal, oh. Manolis let's go. Yeah. 10.30 in the morning. Right. All the singers say that's awfully early to sing. Do you yeah. have any special tricks or things you do yeah. to get going wake up at seven o'clock in the morning really yeah have a good breakfast mm -hmm. bit heavier than normal mm -hmm. and then come to the theater an hour an hour 30 minutes before everything the real also start dressing early make up early and then 10 minutes before the beginning of the real so warm up the voice and go in for baritone, it's a bit easier. For bass, it's easy, but uh, not for soprano and tenor. That's true. I have they to say. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it exactly, but you know, when you have the role in your throat, it's, it's not so difficult to sing it in, even in the morning. Mm -hmm. And now, everywhere in the world, we sing uh, dress roles in the morning, even in Italy now, because every night there are shows. And, uh, well, so, this is a thing all over the world then, dress rehearsals in the morning. Dress rehearsals and the orchestra also actually are always in the, in the morning. Uh -huh. We had already three orchestra also in the morning, mm -hmm. and we, we tried, but you know, tomorrow morning would be a bit of audience also, yes. in, the, in the public, people uh -huh. would, would see the performance. Mm -hmm. It's always a bit different with the people there. But we will see, I think it would be, would be nice. We work the art, and uh, we're ready for this uh, amazing production from Richard Hires. Mm -hmm. We are having yeah. fun, oh, I have good. to say. Oh, good. It's a nice production to listen and to watch. So I want to ask you, 10 minutes is all you take to get your voice warmed up? Well, for my role, for this yeah. role, I uh -huh. think it's uh, enough 10, 15 minutes. I don't need too much because I have, I have time during the performance to, to warm up my voice. I'm not starting immediately from the beginning oh, with, the, with heavy lines. Oh, I see. You don't have a big aria right no. at the top or anything. No. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. It's much different than my Maria Stuart uh, style, you know, yeah. because in this opera, well, for the tenor it's different because he have already at the beginning one or two arias actually in the first half, but mm -hmm. for me and, and for Geronte and for Christine, for, for Manon Lescaut, mm -hmm. the, the best part is in the second act. We have an one act for warm-up, and act then we start. So, yeah. so all the pressure's on Roberto in the beginning, right. and then it kind of, then it shifts later. Right. So I know you sang the role of Lesko at the Deutsche Oper in Berlin in 2008. Yeah. Did you, have you done it anywhere else since then? No. No? And, no? And also in, in that production was, I think, too early for me to sing Lesko. Yeah. Because uh, Lesko, it's, uh, it's not so hard singing, but... Uh, need um, a bit of uh, you know actor and uh, need to to be on stage to to act his role mm -hmm. and it's also difficult m musically and i think need a bit more experience and now when i restarted because you know 2008 and 2015 16 eight, eight years, years yeah. it's completely different the voice is completely different myself my body too and i restarted from the beginning and I felt much better now and much easier now than eight years ago, definitely. So you say he has to act, so you're on stage a lot just reacting to what's going on Yeah, and around also, you, yeah. you know, in and, and this production especially, the stage is a bit particular. People will see when come to, mm -hmm. to see the show. We have to run a lot there 
and we have to walk on, on stairs a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, there are many control scene, you know. I have to, to, to act not in the, in the principal scene, but beside. Right, in the and little are, business yeah, on the side of the stage. there are business everywhere yeah. on stage. Uh -huh. And uh, I think it's, it's important to, to be there. To, you know that to, to, to be present, present to be part right, of it. yeah to yeah. be part of it wow yeah and then the third act uh, I'm well it's also another important scene you will see that and, and it's it's heavy it's an heavy job I think mm -hmm. not maybe not for singing but it's it's every job for everything it's a mix of singing and acting it's a nice role a lot a lot of operas have characters that have their you're on stage like all the time right and it's important for you to be involved in the story even if you don't do a lot a lot of singing yes. and this is one of those well, but I... actually i i moved the opera because i i saved with manon i bring manon to to Geronte house uh, and then i bring the grid to manon and then i try to save her in the third act and uh, i try to move all the scene, all the mm -hmm, situations, mm -hmm. and I'm always in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's talk about this this character a little bit more, because yeah. I've I've had a lot of fun the last week. I've been actually reading the Abbe Prevo novel okay. in English, but Great. but and I realize that Lescaut is really a central, as you say, a central yeah. part of this story, and he does quite quite a lot. Yes. Um, but he then he he seems kind of opportunistic and not such a nice guy but then he sort of seems to change yes. and encourages her to go back to Degreu. What's going on with him do you well, think? Well actually Man Lescaut and Manon are brother and sister yes. and they really love each other. There is a, there is a very good uh, feeling you know brotherly feeling mm -hmm. and uh, Lescaut understand during the Manon aria in the second act that she really miss uh, to Grie, she missed to say even hello, even bye to the Grie, mm -hmm. and uh, and he think okay maybe I can bring back the Grie, and we will see we can also made another type of life together because I'm teaching to the Grie to play cards you know yes. maybe we can we can yeah. be became rich by cards or something but I'm you know I'm in love with my sister in a good way and. Also, when when she she risks the to be exiled to 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 French, not to go away to, to to America. I tried to save her, but um, it's not possible because you know somebody betrayed me and uh, everything go away. But uh, I I really try to to be good. Also, at the beginning, Manon is is going to be bringing in in a, in a convent in a monastery, you know. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, I think it's not the right the right life for my sister and okay maybe I sell a bit my sister but we are we made an agreement before with my sister we want to have a normal life our father decide for our life but I have to go she has to go in a convent mm -hmm. but That's true. we decide yeah. okay no we want other life and we did another life mm -hmm. I think this is, is a seems so love no? uh -huh. yeah they so they've sort of he sort of have taken control of the lives for the two of them. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Yes. It's the uh, intermission during Donizetti's Maria Stuarda, and we're speaking with baritone Massimo Cavalletti, who is uh, singing the role of Lescaux in Puccini's Manon Lescaux. Uh, it opens this Friday, and the dress rehearsal is tomorrow morning. Uh, your director, Richard Eyre, has set this production in the 1940s in occupied Paris. Now, that was a time in the world where there was a lot of good and bad going on and sometimes people couldn't tell the difference i guess we would say moral ambiguity if you know what i mean right. he says that he thinks that lesco is a very nuanced character so those, that's some of the stuff we've talked about before the good and the bad sort of yes because uh, lesco is a young guy loving life loving beautiful women love to play cards but also he have the responsibility of his sister mm -hmm. and also his life. Them life for them too is important. They have to to take care of themselves, and they use this old rich guy, old rich ma rich man, for make money. Maybe well, they live in the, in his house, but also he try to to make happy to to make happy, no? Uh huh. To make Manon. him happy, yeah. Uh huh. And. Uh, to go on with uh, with the love story with the grief, Lescaut is is a good 
is a good figure, especially in this Richard Eye production, because uh, during the third act, I'm going to be shot. And uh, because I try everything for to save Manon from the exi exile. Mm -hmm. oh, you say exi it? Exile, exile uh -huh. right. And, uh, and at the end, I'm shattered by somebody kill me. So I, so I heard. So yeah. I'll see it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. deal. So have you, um, have you talked about all these ideas with Christina Opelais, your Manon, yeah. about being brother and sister and a strong feeling between you? Well, we, we, we created, we built up during the three, four weeks ray also, and mm -hmm. I think we, we had now a very good chemistry. We also had, uh, you know, we, we spoke a lot with Richard also. We tried to find on stage uh, a good, uh, good feelings and uh, we smile and we had a lot of fun and i think people can see that on stage especially when we are alone singing our duet in the second act and also when we meet after in the third act uh, and she's in in the jail we hug each other and we we really seems a uh, family mm -hmm. and i think it's an is a very nice feeling let's talk about the music a little bit right. this was puccini's first big hit uh, coming right before La Boheme, an opera you've sung here yes. in Know Well. In what way do you think that Manon Lesco is like his other operas that we know and love? And in, in what ways is it different? Just from your viewpoint well, as a singer. It's, uh, it's more dif different respect the rest of the opera after, I think. Because Manon Lesco Puccini shows to everybody, to the world, his uh, character and his great uh, ideas and his great, uh, you know, how do you say, um, feeling for the music. Mm -hmm. He used a lot of old, um, how can I say, old studied, he studied a lot before, even when he was young, and he used many other composers, old composers, old ideas uh -huh. in this new, new opera. Well, it's great because uh, when I hear, when I listen to these, these melodies, I feel, because you know, I'm coming from Luca, the same city coming in Puccini. So I, yeah, so I understand. And I, I, I feel to be at home. I can really smell in this music our character, our being Lu from Luca, being from Tuscany, our countries, mm -hmm. our ideas. And I really loved, during the reels, I was listening to the famous intermezzo played by Luis oh, yes. in the orchestra, uh -huh. hear the mat. And I was uh, crying, I tell you, because this music is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. It's such a beautiful it, intermezzo. Incredible, I tell you. And we, have, and we have Luigi also conducting Cavalleria with right. that beautiful intermezzo. Unbelievable. At I was listening time. to the performance. The, the last performance was um, Alanya singing mm -hmm. Canio, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, well, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. That, that hadn't occurred to me. The two most famous intermezzi in opera we have on stage at the Met right now at yeah. the same time. That's, yeah. that's I was amazing. thinking also. Yeah. yeah. So um, how would you describe the vocal writing for Lesco? Is it, does it compare to Marcello? Does it I compare to anything? I think it's, for, for me, I think it's better Lesco than Marcello. Well, M Marcello is a very nice character, but Lesco is a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. For myself, I think maybe also because I sang more than 100 performance Marcello in my career, and maybe Lesco is a bit new, and <laughs> I, I feel better with this score. It could be. But also in the second act, there are many good lines that can show uh, to myself and how is good this role, and um, even the extension of this role is a bit longer, no, uh -huh. than the the extension of of. Marcello, for example, and uh, I really like, and also it's more present in the opera for, for my text. Huh? Mm -hmm. Lesco is more present in the opera and the in the for ideas sure. of the opera. Respect it, Marcello. It's um, and it's also very different than the Massenet version. Lesco, Lesco is a kind of a small part that goes in and out a few times yeah. in that. Yes. It's completely different. It's completely different. So. Um, I know that uh, Met audiences and opera lovers around the world are very excited because Manon Lesco will be shown 
live in HD in movie theaters around the world. We love it. You have? Do you? Do you love that? I love it. Do you have? Friends? I already did it once with with Bohem in 2014. The famous one with Christina yes, when she right. sang Butter, Madam Butterfly, Butterfly on Friday the night and the and day after. And then stepped yes. in on Saturday and sang that. Right. So, do you, are you have friends and family around the world that are yes, going to? Yes. Yes. I already share on my website and and on my, you know. Facebook, everything, the cinema, the cinema uh -huh. list in oh, Italy. <laughs> yeah, because many people, many friends will go to, to list. Even my parents will go close to my. Nice. My Do they home. still live in Luca? Yes. In yes. They will come in here to see performance 18 of, of February, mm -hmm. but then they're back in Italy for the HD program. Is there a theater in Luca that shows the Met? No, actually, is oh, is uh, one 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 city close to Luca in Pisa. That would have yeah. been so exciting to know that these were showing in Puccini's hometown, but in Pisa, as in the Leaning Tower. Yes, that right. Pisa. Ah, yeah. ah. right. So you've sung Let's Go, Shonar, Mocello. Any plans of Sharpless or other things like that in well, your future? Well, I, I was talking with, with Christina during the performance. She mm -hmm. told me that maybe Sharpless is a good role for me. Never thought about that. Maybe because now I'm I'm trying to move in a bit on the Verdi's opera, uh -huh. but. Like every baritone wants to. Well, I think I'm still young for su su such beautiful and great roles, but this year I tried uh, to sing uh, Renato and Ballet Masker, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, I already sang many times uh, Rodrigo and Don Carlo, and I think I will I will try in the future to to step in that in that role, but also Sharpless can be ni can be nice for sure. But the other Puccini baritones are too too early for me. Too early for yeah. you. So in your future sometime. Maybe. We'll Massimo see. Cavalletti sings the role of Lesco in our new production of Puccini's Manon Lesco, opposite Christina Opelis and Roberto Alagna, conducted by Fabio Luisi and directed by Richard Eyre. The new production opens this Friday the 12th, and we will be here to broadcast that premiere right here on MedOpera Radio. Massimo, thank you so much for coming thank up. You. It was so thank interesting to hear all about Let's Go. I'm really looking forward to this opera. We have not done it since I've been here, so it's going to be thank very you. exciting for all of us. Thank you very much. This is uh, Med Opera Radio on Sirius XM. We'll be back with more of Donizetti's Maria Stuarda in just a moment. Stay with us.